Yeah, yo, 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 what up, what up, ferret, what's going on, buddy? What it do? What's going on, peoples? It's Friday, baby, we made it. Ferret be teaching class today. Blue, what's going on, buddy? What's going on, man? What's everybody up to, man? The weekend's upon us, man. The weekend is upon us. It's time, dude. Chilling, rolling back, game updates that break mods. Feels good, dude. You talking about some Terraria stuff or what? Terraria? Is that what you, you're, you're, uh, you're messing with, dude? Oh, some Beat Saber stuff. Word. Oh, okay. Okay. Right on, dude. Nice. All right. Well, that feels bad. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, we've all dealt with that a little bit, I think, you know, from time to time. Good stuff. Good stuff, dude. Hope you get it all sorted. <laughs> I had some updates pop off this morning that got me out a little bit late to start stream, so sorry about that, but it uh, looks like everything's working okay so far. Um, yeah, man, we got, um, we'll be doing Grounded later this afternoon. Uh, grounded will kick off later this afternoon. Just need to test them. There you go, buddy. Well, uh, here's the hoping, bro. I hope it works out. Um, so the plan for today... Uh, we've got the news, obviously, and then we're going to go back and watch all the Gorilla Collective stuff. So, uh, we'll do the news, we'll do Gorilla Collective, and then um, we've got access Accessibility um, Showcase that kicks off at 11 o'clock our time. So we're talking in about five and a half hours. But the, uh, the Gorilla Collective Showcase is, I think, supposed to be pretty long, like almost three hours long. So we're just going to hang out after the news, we'll watch as much of the Gorilla Collective as we can get in because we missed it on Wednesday because uh, the stream was down. And then we'll, uh, we'll watch the accessibility uh, showcase, which I don't think would be any longer than an hour probably. And uh, then the rest of the afternoon, you know, we'll, we'll get all of our gaming in, man. Cool. So that's the, that's the play, that's the plan. And uh, let's go ahead and dive into it, man. Let's get in here and see what we got. This is what we're listening to this morning. Crypt of the Necro Dancer vibes, man. Oh yeah, cool rhythm-based uh, game, adventure, RPG, um, it's, it's uh, all based on rhythm, uh, rhythm game, you fight bosses uh, based on uh, dancing to the beat and stuff with the character, it's really wild. And it's got a dope soundtrack, man, so if uh, any of that sounds cool, you're digging the music this morning, go check it out, alright? Go ahead and uh, kill the music for now and we'll dive into this new stuff. Coco, let's go. Let's go. We've already got something up this morning from our buddy Kaz yesterday. Um, so we'll hit on that. We'll hit on that. And uh, let's see what else we can find. Again, I'll go over our schedule at the end of the uh, the new segment this morning. Um, but this is what we got going on. We watched all this yesterday. There's some cool stuff in here. There's some cool stuff. The Devolver, the Devolver Showcase was... What well, seemed to me just to be a big shot at how much the AI is taking on, or how much the uh, gaming industry is taking on AI. It was actually really funny to me, but it was—that's what it, that's what it came off as to me. Instead of it being as funny and over the top, like over the top funny, uh, you know, they they usually try to put in just a lot of comedy. This seemed to be a big stab at a lot of the rest of the industry. Um, rather than just trying to get a lot of comedic value out of it, which to me was funny, but you know, I don't know how much other people might have caught that. I'm sure we'll probably see it in the uh, the news this morning. But um, there was some good stuff yesterday. It was cool. This is the one we'll we'll watch the vod of today, and then we'll watch this live. Okay, uh, tomorrow we'll be getting into wholesome direct and future game show in the middle of the uh, stream day, and then um. On the 11th, we got Xbox Starfield and PC Gaming Show. That's going to be a big day right there, all right? Cool. But I'll talk about it again before we end the news segment. Um, let's go ahead and... Uh, Pull this up. We'll recap the uh, big news from Summer Games Fest, okay? 
We'll recap all this for anybody that might have missed it when we were all hanging out and watching it yesterday, all right? Persona 3 Reload and Persona 5 Tactica leaked, launching on Game Pass, apparently. So we'll pull that up. Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty leaks online at $35. I mean, look, I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, this is not going to be a popular take here, but um, in my opinion... CD Projekt Red shouldn't really get a whole lot of kudos for uh, turning the game into a playable game when that's what it should have been on release anyways. This is one of the most notoriously used examples of a terrible release uh, in modern video gaming history. And I don't think they should get very much recognition for standing by their product and turning it into a game that's playable because it should have released like that. It should have released in a very polished, playable state. Every game should, as far as I'm concerned. The fact that it didn't, and the fact that it released in such a terrible state, I'm more of the mindset that this content shouldn't really cost anything. This should be something that they push out to everybody that, that has been um, willing to dive into that game at one point or another uh, even though it had so many issues on release as kind of a, a thank you for being part of it in my opinion but I'll bring it up and we'll talk about it uh, that's not going to be a popular take but um, I don't really care I'm just tired of seeing developers thrive, publishers thrive, even though they push out terrible products. Yeah, we saw this yesterday. Is, is it not weird? Yeah, I know. Like I said, I, I, I'm not saying that they, they shouldn't get a little bit of recognition for it. You know, and I mean, we talk a lot about Anthem, right? Anthem's a game that needed the companies to stand by it. You know, it could have been a good game, I think. I think Anthem could have been something solid, you know, but they just dropped it. And it feels bad when that happens, you know. There are a lot of examples. That's just the first one that comes to mind right now. Um, but ultimately... And, you know, I know you, you, you know, you said you didn't disagree. I don't think most people in this community necessarily disagree with that sentiment. You know, I agree, Farad. I think that's, the, I, I think so too. I think, I don't think anybody should be getting into bed with EA. That's such a scary game to play, you know. Um, some, some companies don't really have much of a, uh, a choice in the matter though. You know what I mean? So, um, they all have their different own particular situations, you know? Yeah, just, just fold that hand, baby. <laughs> yeah, you know, we've talked a lot about that too, though. You know, that's where I think that people want to like point fingers and stuff with like, to, let's, let's to use an example of like Redfall, right? Let's talk about Redfall. We'll use an example of like Redfall. Well, people are like, well, really, this falls on Microsoft. And you're right, it does. 
the people aren't wrong there. It does. It falls on Microsoft because we're talking about, you know, Arcane, Bethesda, Zenimax, Microsoft. You know what I mean? Like, there's a, a there's a lot of hierarchy going on there about companies in the 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 chain of ownership and everything. You know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, it's a bit wild. But ultimately, who does it fall on? It falls on Xbox and Microsoft, right? To make sure that uh, something they're planning on being very good it ends up being very good. But I'll say this again. You know, we talked about the whole, you know, I compare it to kind of micromanaging stuff, right? If a company doesn't, you know, if, if you have a company underneath, you know, a subsidiary for you or whatever, and, and they don't give you a reason to mess with their process, I don't think you should, you know? And EA is one of those that I think wants to micromanage everything almost, you know? And that's why so much of their stuff is so disgusting, it's not that they don't come out with some decent stuff sometimes, but, you know, I think that these studios that get purchased and bought up and, and they're doing good things and they're, they've, they've got a history of doing good things, shouldn't be messed with. Why, 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 why would you, you know? And, um, I mean, it feels bad. It's a bad situation for Microsoft to have a company that's notoriously done some pretty good stuff to have such a bad product be pushed out. And nowadays, Arcane will absolutely have parent company hands all up in that uh, anything they do moving forward you know but i don't know it's a it's a rough thing dude i think and none of us really know exactly what's going on internal unless anybody hanging out here has actually got the the inside that we don't know about or whatever right but i don't know i'm just uh I'm so sick of the um, the big the big AAA devs just and publishers just pushing out crap games and EA is great. There it is. There it is. Yeah. So I don't know. I feel like you know, and what's a, what's a really really stupid too is if, if you guys don't remember. CD Projekt Red won an award. They won an award basically for it was like uh, how much a game had had uh, had been worked on after its uh, initial release and stuff like that. But it wasn't necessarily supposed to be about fixing a game. It was supposed to be about you know, it was supposed to be about focusing on adding to a game's content and stuff like that. And instead, CD Projekt Red won this award because they released a game in a terrible, terrible, terrible state. And they had a whole bunch of room where they needed to keep working on it to make it good. And then they won an award for it. You're, you're rewarding devs. You're giving them awards for releasing games in a terrible state. What is that crap, dude? Ferret knows everything? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, Ferret. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It is the all-knowing Ferret. Yes. <laughs> Bro, that's going to be the new meme in here. Yeah. that's There, there it is, Wick. I love it, dude. Yep, I remember that, Wick, yeah. Yeah, I did know that, yeah, 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 no. I mean, they're, they're notoriously just terrible like that, yeah. Um, or I recall, didn't they, wait, it was Knockout City, right? They were, but they, uh, before they, they ended, before Knockout City was done, they had moved away from EA, right? <clears throat> but they weren't, they weren't still under EA whenever the game shut down. They had already moved away from EA. They got out from underneath EA, if I remember correctly. 
Because we had talked about how it sucked that they were actually under EA's label. Because there were a lot of people uh, that, you know, other streamer friendos and stuff that liked that game and were playing that game. And we had talked about that. I don't think so. I don't think so. I'll pull it up. I think they they got out from under EA. I thought they did. Yep. Um, yeah. Publisher EA released the game for Windows, Switch, PS4, Xbox One in May of 2021 under its EA Originals label. Velen Studios took over publishing, who is also the developer, took over publishing duties in June of 2022, and the, the game then transitioned into a fully free-to-play title on June 1st of 2022. Yep. So they got out from under EA uh, towards the end of that game's uh, lifespan. Yep. That's what I thought. Yep. And died five days later. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. They say they're not they're not uh necessarily potentially totally done with that game, but they're pursuing options, you know, of what they want to do next and everything. We read about it, yeah. They just didn't they didn't have enough player base to keep it open. <clears throat> like, I mean, so many other games out there, you know. It's a it's a tough it's a tough industry, dude. It's a tough industry. But I don't know. I'm just I'm I'm tired dude, I'm just tired of it. I'm sure that Phantom Liberty is gonna have a ton of content. And, uh, but I just, I just can't get behind these companies that, that do this crap, dude, with the, I mean, this is one of the most notorious modern day examples of crap game releases. And they still made a ton of money off this game. And the way I see it, a good company would be trying to say thank you to everybody that still stood by that product and their company through all the turmoil and uh, give them that content. That's the way I see that. We'll talk about it whenever I pull up the article. Talk to Commando looks wild yesterday. Yeah, uh, let's just go with all the games announced in the Devolver Digital too. We're gonna we're gonna um, we'll hit both of these up. Yeah. It was cool seeing Nicholas Cage. Nicholas Cage up there was dope. <laughs> that was really neat. Nick looks good, dude. Nick looks good, man. You know. It's been nice to see him make such a resurgence into uh, the uh, the movie and TV scene and everything, too. Uh, I hit on it yesterday, but I'm going to pull it back up today. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, I hit on it yesterday uh, before we, we ended the stream, but I'm going to pull it back up today. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, it's a good one for people to get into and, and try, man, for free. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for uh, making sure, buddy. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about it. Yeah, Witchfire got a new trailer. Early access launch date. Oh, dude. I think the biggest hype for me was Path of Exile 2, man. Yeah, you're good, Blue. You're good. I don't know that we'll need this, but we'll put it right there. We might not need that. We've got we've got a lot a lot of this kind of stuff that we might not need to hit on. I'll pull it up just in case because we've got recap articles up and stuff. Yeah, yeah that that was a big one for me, dude. That was a big one. I already knew they were developing it. I'd seen seen some really early stuff a while back, but I hadn't seen anything recent. That's big hype for me, dude. 
I know it's going to be the same thing as POE one where I'm just not able to play enough to keep up. You know, I'm going to be playing too many other games and stuff, but I will definitely play that game on release for a good amount of time. <laughs> yeah. Sonic superstars got announced. That was cool. Again, I'm just going to be pulling up some of these just in case we don't hit them in, in one of these two articles here. Yeah. Spider-Man two got confirmed launch for October, 2023. Cool. We've seen, I'm not going to pull this article up. We've seen plenty about Spider-Man 2 through watching the uh, PlayStation Showcase. They showed a big chunk of that game uh, off in their showcase at the end of last month. And um, I'm super hyped for Spider-Man 2 to release. And I'm not even going to play it. I just want Insomniac to start working on Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to play it right now, you know? Yeah. It, yeah, yeah, fair. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I dude, they do a great job with these Spider-Man games. and They're notoriously great at making these games. I think that Spider-Man 2 is going to be fantastic. I know there are a lot of people that are jacked up about uh, playing it when it releases. I just never got into them. I don't have a, a huge want to play it really i've got a lot of other stuff on my agenda and our schedule to play here but i cannot wait for them to make this wolverine game um and as soon as they're done with spider-man 2 that's where they're supposed to be focusing their their efforts on so i cannot wait for this game to release so they can get to work on wolverine the optimus prime thing is weird it's weird seeing Optimus Prime be the same size as like humans. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. We knew it was coming. We had seen it in the news here recently, but it was weird. I thought it was, uh, it was, I mean, to me, I mean, I'm not a Fortnite player anyway, so I guess just about anything Fortnite comes off a little bit weird to me, but uh, I don't really knock that game. I, I appreciate the fact that it's, uh, been such a huge thing for gaming and for like the battle royale genre and stuff we got a lot of people that play it in the community too so um i don't know it was just weird seeing optimus that small like like the size of all the other humans and stuff <laughs> that was odd yeah i know yeah i know but that's what that game is dude People that play that game love the cosmetics, man. Path of Exile 2 gets a brief development update. So we might look into this one a little bit more in depth because that might give us some more information about what's going on in the development of that game. Yo, we saw this. Yeah, Street Fighter 6 crossing over with Exo Primal. Both Capcom games, right? So that's a really easy thing for them to do. It was really wild when we saw this trailer yesterday um, because it was like Meta, Metal Ryu. You know, it was like, what is this, dude? Is they having like a Metal Ryu version of uh, uh, like character you can get in, in Street Fighter, you know? And But no, it's actually Exo Primal stuff, which is kind of wild, you know? Right, yeah. Robu Ryu is, is actually Exo Primal because Exo Primal is dropping next month, right? Um, and, uh, Exo Primal looks like it could be cool, man. It's going to be on Game Pass too, guys. So this was cool to watch also. Saw that yesterday. The Sandland game looked pretty wild, dude. You know what I thought that was going to be? Whenever I first saw the trailer, uh, what is, oh, what's the name of that game? Um, like uh is that it yeah it's like uh we, we heard recently that there's the potential for a new dragon quest monsters game to come out and that's what i thought this game was going to be was like dragon quest monsters um which to me it looked like it could have been uh right off the bat but it's not <laughs> Hey, dude, don't yuck my yum, bro. <laughs> don't yuck my yum, dog. 
That was a that was a really funny trailer though. Look, I, I, I I'm not gonna lie, dude. I, I I loved Twisted Metal back in the day, like the old PlayStation days, bro. I loved Twisted Metal. So, uh, dude, that that trailer was great. I've seen another one too that was really funny. Also, um, from what I've seen in the trailer so far, I'm actually looking forward to watching that show when it drops. Um, I really hope it's good. What I'm also hopeful for is that if the show does does good, it'll reboot the series. You know, it'll reboot that IP. They'll they'll decide to make the game again if the show does well, you know? Because quite often what we'll see is like games do very well and then they get adapted into the, the other forms of entertainment, right? It's not all that often that we see... Because, dude, we haven't had a Twisted game in how long, man? We haven't had a Twisted game in forever. Twisted Metal game. And so it's not, I, I think it's much more rare we see it happen the, the other way around, right? But I think there's potential for this to happen. Like if, if Twisted Metal, the show does really well, then we might actually end up getting the series to get rebooted as a game, which would be dope. The games were, were sick. They were a lot of fun back then. I mean, it was just carnage, right? It was just like driving around and blowing, blowing each other up and with vehicles and but they could do they could do a bang up job with you know modernizing that game I think you know so they could mess it up too obviously because devs are good at that nowadays but <sighs> Remnant Two dude Remnant Two looks good has anybody else been getting like kind of jacked about what they've been seeing out of Revenant or Remnant Two I mean. Um, Remnant 2 looks pretty dope, dude. <laughs> Nick Cage, Dead by Daylight. They got some details on that. We'll pull up just a second. One second, guys. All right, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Nick Cage. New uh, Survivor in Dead by Daylight. Good times. Got that up already. Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. Um, yeah, dude. Prince, a new Prince of Persia game. There's going to be some hype about that. We haven't had a Prince of Persia game in a long time. Uh, there was... Cash and I were talking about this yesterday. There was talk about a remake being made... And um, the last I had heard, that got shot down. It got shut down um, and scrapped. But I, I could be misremembering. I haven't heard anything else on that front for a while. Um, I don't know. I don't know. But we're getting this now, so we'll, we'll take a look at that. Cocoon. This was out of the... Uh, what was the name of that showcase? I, I, uh, I'm tripping, dude. Day of the Devs stuff. Yeah, Day of the Devs. Looks kind of wild. Yes, here we go. Okay, I'm not going to need this tweet, tweet up then. Where's, where's that tweet? Get that tweeter out of here. So here you go. Uh, this is Legend of Zelda movie Universal reportedly nearing deal for the next Nintendo project. That was brought to us yesterday during the showcases. Um by cash cash saw this blowing up on twitter yesterday and, and brought it to my attention so um all i had was the twitter this morning that he he uh he had seen one of the twitter posts but uh we've got a bit of a uh an actual article we'll read this morning about it be down to play another prince of persia game dude i never really played him i watched one of my buddies play him though i had a buddy that was way into him and uh we were like uh roommates back in the day and uh 
we would just like hang out and, and watch each other play games sometimes and stuff. And so, um, he was way into Prince of Persia. So I just used to like hang out and watch him play Prince of Persia games. Um, which was like fun for me. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. 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 They, I mean, there, there, there's a whole like big fan base behind those games, man. FF seven rebirth is going to PS five consoles early next year. Um, that's what, about all we need to know right now. We saw the uh, the rebirth stuff yesterday. New Alan Wake two gameplay revealed. We saw that as well. There's uh, Alan Wake two is, is hitting in October. It's supposed to, anyways. It's not gone gold yet or anything, but we're not that far away, you know. What about four? I think about four and a half months till this is supposed to release. Um, and I'm going to probably scare Tober it. It looks really, really neat. So we'll probably end up playing Alan Wake 2 and Alan Wake 1 as well. Let's go look at our other search real quick. We've got a lot of, I knew we'd have a lot of stuff to recap today. So do we get the to Toxic Commando thing up? I don't think we did. Yeah, let's pull this up just in case. I don't know that we're going to need all of these because we got to recap Article 2, but. Yeah, I mean, let's let's talk about this. Let's pull this up. I think this is one of the things I really wanted to touch on this morning. We started trying to talk about it yesterday a little bit. Um, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is coming out on two discs. I, I don't when was the last time we saw a game come out on multiple optical media? You know what I mean? It's uh it's I think it's one of those things and I I, th I don't think Cash is wrong. Cash was like wait, it's partially probably due to nostalgia from Square because the Final Fantasy games back in the day always had multiple discs. So there's probably some of that, but for games that are really big, they also don't have a choice, really. You've got a few different options, and we'll talk about all that when we bring this article up. Um, we've hit on that a lot here lately, but it's a, there, there's a big issue going on in the gaming industry right now about, you know, do we keep doing physical? And if so, how do we move forward with that? <laughs> because really, it's only on the, the console side of things, right? And if we're not doing it, then there's just, there's, you know, do they just get rid of any kind of readers altogether? No more physical, just, just digital. PC has been there for a long time. We'll talk about it. Look, man, uh, so so you guys see this article here. Video game conventions are still uh, hotbeds of sexualized abuse. Anywhere you can go where there's going to be a massive amount of people gathering to try and have a good time, there's going to be predators. And you have to do your best to ensure that you keep yourself safe. That's what it comes down to. Yourself and your, your friends, family, loved ones, you got to do, you got to, be vigilant, man. Stay on your toes. Look out for other people, too. There are predators out there. They're going to be trying to take advantage of other people. That's the way it goes. Looking, uh, trying to find people that are trying to have a good time and, and you know, taking advantage of those people. Anywhere there, It's anywhere that there's a massive amount of people just trying to have a good time. It, it can be video game conventions. It can be concerts. It can be, you know... Anything like that. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter. I mean, you're not wrong, though. You know, it can be cosplay conventions. It can, any, anywhere where a lot of people are going to gather and just try to have a good time, there's going to be a little bit of some probably partying going on and stuff, you know, and, and there's the potential for people to be taken advantage of or even just for, you know, people to be walking around with like an open container of water and somebody's trying to spike their water or something. I mean, there's all kinds of crazy stuff that goes on. 
So the best thing you can do is just be vigilant, stay on your toes. Um, make sure you're always keeping your drinks covered. Um, don't get la lackadaisical about things. You know what I mean? You don't know most of those people there and, um, you just need to be careful. So yeah, video game conventions too, but it, there, it, but basically any kind of convention, any kind of gathering, you know, it, is a, a place where this kind of stuff is, is potentially going to go down. You know what I mean? And, and uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, but if something does happen to you or somebody, you know, report it as fast as possible, whatever the case may be. If something seems off, if something seems off, just get away from that situation as fast as possible and report it. It's the best thing you can do for yourselves. I'm never going to be able to get over the uh, the Mortal Kombat 1 thing, dude. I just, it's so weird to me. Now that we're friends again, is it okay if I pet you? Holy crappers! Thanks, dude. Thanks, dude. <laughs> Hell, Miss Bat, what's up? Thanks, it's friendo. Bar 10 months. Just resubscribed for 10 months. Yo, yo, yo. Good morning, friendo. What's going on? 10 months, yo. Thank you. Thank you. How you doing this fantastic Friday? Happy uh happy start to the weekend. <clears throat> GG Miss B. What's up, Mithril? Hiding at work. Oh, sorry, everybody. Shh. <laughs> we got you. We got you. <laughs> nice. Nice, Miss Bat. All right. That's great. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like I need to be quiet now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wee -woo, wee -woo. <laughs> <laughs> Not too quiet. Okay, 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 okay. Ferret, turn the sirens off, man. Still need to be able to hear. <laughs> okay, okay, I got you, I got you. Yeah, we saw this yesterday. The Mortal Kombat 1 thing's weird, man. I just don't, I don't understand how they're going to plan on moving forward with that. That's the thing that's really got me, like, kind of, I, I get it. We don't have... So the original Mortal Kombat was just Mortal Kombat, right? But everybody refers to it as Mortal Kombat 1 because then it was Mortal Kombat 2, 3, 4. You know, they had some other ones and everything in between, you know, here and there. But it goes all the way up to 11, and now they're starting back over at Mortal Kombat 1. It just seems very, un you know, like, like, like where's the creativity in that, you know?
Wait, wait, uh, above topic. What are you talking about, Mithril? Alpha would have worked for sure, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Mortal Kombat Rebirth. That's what me and Cash were talking about yesterday. Well, yeah, Mithra, but that's not what we were talking about. I mean, we were talking about the fact that... I mean, I don't know if you saw that what brought that up, dude, but... <sighs> I mean, the reason that that got brought up, dude, is it, I don't know if you were in here yet, but it's um, where was that, dude? It was a it was a Yahoo. Video game conventions are still hotbeds of sexualized abuse, dude. This is what it was about. It wasn't about stuff in video games or anything like that. We're talking about like, this is what it brought. And all I said was that anywhere people gather. Yeah, I know. He said he was just saying that, that it could happen there. And I was saying that it could happen anywhere, anywhere where, where people gather. So um, I think you probably read it and, and maybe took it out of. Obviously, anything that's consensual is, is fine. But, you know, things that are not consensual. People getting abused, you know what I mean, is not okay. You know what I mean? A convention, concerts, it doesn't matter. What I was getting at, uh, what I was telling people, man, and obviously I think you missed this. What I was telling people was that any anywhere, obviously, that, that people gather in big crowds, whether it be conventions or concerts or what have you, it's not – the thing that I hate is that they're, they're just narrowing this down to video game conventions – it happens everywhere. There are predators everywhere that want to take advantage of people and do gross stuff like this. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So, I mean, this this is what we were really talking about, you know, and it that's what brought that up. Uh, so, I just wanted to go back and touch on that real quick so you knew where that came from. But it's it's – my big thing was telling people that are here and hanging out that it's just important that if you're going to be – attending those kinds of things that you just be very careful you know be vigilant take care of yourself and your friends and your loved ones when you're at those events and if something does happen to just remove yourself from the situation as fast as possible and report it you know um there's just predators everywhere you know and it's 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 gross so but yeah i mean i hear what you're saying i was just i think that you didn't have the entire context of what that came from you know yeah yeah <clears throat> but it's not i mean it, it seems like video games always get this like negative connotation with them you know they always have and it's i think that's one of those things i don't like seeing that that that's one of the reasons i pointed that out when i came across that article because they're like you know the way that article reads is like scaring people about going to video game conventions. Dude, it's not just video game conventions. It's it's anywhere that people populate in in mass quantities of of, you know, populace to attend anything. You know what I mean? There's the potential for those things to happen. They quite often do, unfortunately. You know, but it's not just video game stuff. And that's the way that that title makes it read. And it's going to like scare people off from video game things, you know, and that's not fair. It should be a more broad title there that like conventions are a hotbed for, you know, sexualized abuse or whatever. <laughs> you know, why does it have to be video games? You know, um, just like the same thing with video games uh, always being targeted for it's the video games that, that are making everybody violent. No, dude, no. It's the lack of, um, you know, like it's too much access to high powered weapons and, and lack of healthcare and help for people that, that are in dire situations and need, you know, help for, you know, 
stress and, and mental mental distress and, and anguish. And, you know, there's there's a lot of things that contribute to what causes people to engage. And some people just have violence tendencies, which is terrible. And the more readily, easily access they have to high powered weapons, the more, you know, probable it is that they're going to engage in those kinds of acts. You know what I mean? It's not video games, dude. <laughs> there have been so many studies that's the thing it's crazy to me because there's been so many studies and you know i obviously go to the like that everybody wants to project the the issue of violence in the world uh all the time on like media and video games and stuff but there's been so many studies dude about the fact that video games do not invoke and and they're not the catalyst behind violent tendencies in people you don't a, a normal person you know what I mean? And of a, a, a normal mindset does not play Grand Theft Auto and then go, it's time. It's time to enact this in the real world. You know what I mean? That's just, that's not the way that works. There's been study after study after study after study. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, you're right, Ferret. You're right. Yep. <laughs> Well, and, uh, I'll add to that, Mithril. I don't think you're wrong. I'll add to this, though. I do believe that the world is getting um, really, really, really bad. There are some countries that are still very good about taking care of their citizens, but most countries don't really care all that much anymore, you know, and they don't take care of their people very well. And that's one of those things that, that drives a lot of that. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's not a whole lot of community-based. It's not It's not people caring for people, right? It's all, it, everything's turned into a, a, you know, it's all about capitalism. And how can we turn everything into a business and everything into money? It's not about caring for one another anymore. You know what I mean? It's not about caring for the citizens of the countries. It's not about trying to take care of one another. It's about turning everything into uh, monetization and stuff. You know what I mean? And so I think that's one of the things that drives it, uh, unfortunately. And uh, I don't know. We could talk about that kind of stuff all day, dude. It's, it's, it's bad. I mean, I do. I see the world the same way. And this is another thing I'll say. <sighs> you know, we, we have this community the way it is because I think it's important that people have a a fun yet safe welcoming inclusive spot to be a part of because most of the world isn't like that anymore or or not that it always has been but but most of the world doesn't present that kind of of space for people to just chill and be themselves and and be, like obviously i mean we're safe for work so there are taboo things here that we don't get into and stuff but you know um the thing about the world is I think that the more a lot of people, you know, toxicity breeds toxicity, dude. It's like a virus, you know, it really is. Toxicity breeds toxicity. And um, the same thing it can be said for goodwill, you know what I mean? And treating others nicely, but it doesn't, it doesn't seem to catch on quite the same way as, as like nastiness does. You know what I mean? Oh, wow, Mithril. Yeah, seems good. Seems good. Yikers. So I think that's part of it, too. You know, I think that just naturally, uh, I think that the more people get wrapped up in other people treating them badly, they get sour and turn the same way. And, and um, you know, I think that's why it's so important for, for so many of us to just try to be as good as we can be we all have our days man don't get me wrong yeah echo chamber theory exactly dude exactly yeah but you know again i think that uh you know it seems it seems to be so much more prevalent for the toxic side that the the just nasty side of people nowadays to be rampant than it is to find people that are actually decent 
and kind. You know what I mean? Which I think it makes it even more dire for uh, us to spread the uh, the goodness around. You know, toxic is louder. Yeah, yeah, yep. So I think that's part of it too. I do, I do. Let's keep going here. Yep. Yeah, we've got that up. What? Oh, no way, dude. This is going to be the Geralt uh, voice actor, Doug Cockle. Uh, got diagnosed with prostate cancer. Mm. Yeah, I'm not going to read this whole thing. I'll link it for you guys. What I will say is like, um, obviously, best wishes to, to Doug. And um, <clears throat> dude, I can't stress enough to people. Know your body, dude. Know your body. Have regular checkups if you possibly can. If something seems off or abnormal, get it checked. If it's nothing, cool, it's nothing. If it's something, you want to catch it as early as possible. You know, um, and, uh, to, uh, to Doug, we, uh, we wish Doug the best, uh, what a huge part of the, the, uh, gaming world with all the Witcher stuff, man. And, and he's voiced many, many other characters and everything too. So, um, you know, we'll, uh, we'll keep Doug in our, uh, our thoughts moving forward, man. That's, that's brutal. That's brutal. <laughs> just at everybody dude every single one of them as we continue to grow you'll just have like the entire chat taken up with ats it'll be great <laughs> that'd be awesome <laughs> yay yeah dude <laughs> uh, Yeah, yeah we read about this yesterday this teen girl in China spent uh, her entire family's savings of $64,000. And now the mother is trying to get it all back from these companies that the daughter spent it on. It was all gaming stuff. It was just like on games themselves. And uh, most of it, I think majority of it was in-game content. Um You know, happy. What's up, dude? Uh, so, um, we read about that yesterday. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna dive back into it. But again, uh, look, man. I think that it's this mother's fault for just giving this kid access to an account with sixty four thousand dollars in it. You don't do that, dude. Man. I, I don't really... This game does not look very good to me. We're going to look at this new uh, Lord of the Rings game. It, I'm not really seeing it, dude. Oh, baby. Dude, Souls of P was another... Or, or Lies of P, Souls of P. It's a Pin Pinocchio uh, Souls-like game, you know? Uh, it's uh, Lies of P. I've been watching this game for a long time. And I'm getting so flipping hyped. This was probably my other big hype yesterday was this and uh, Path of Exile 2, man. Oh, God. Okay, Ferret. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey there. Happy. What's up? Happy, 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 happy. <laughs> Yo, uh, I was saying this yesterday. I'll probably play. Uh, I don't even know how long it'll be before Poe Two drops, but I'll probably play that way before I ever play Diablo Four. We've got a D Four update though. We'll check this out. Tweaks the Rogues, which is what our buddy Freaks playing right now. Bosses and dungeons. We saw this yesterday. Not going to dive into that. We've got that up already. 
We got this up. Fall Guys is getting a Tomb Raider crossover. Okay. Yo, we got a ton of stuff right now. Let's get in it, dude. Let's get in it. Let's get in it. All right. Lord of the Rings is back with a brand new adventure. And so let, let's, let's, let's do this first. Let's start off with this. Okay. And then we'll get into the Devolver uh, recap too. Dude, the Devolver. <laughs> I'll talk about that next. It wasn't quite the the showcase they normally do, but I think they had an agenda, dude. I think they were calling out other uh, developers and publishers this year uh, pretty hard. I think they had a reason behind what they were doing. We'll talk about it in a second. Uh, here's all the big news from the Summer Games Fest show. Prince of Persia, Sonic Superstars, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and more. Um, so I have a bunch of individual articles up on these two. Yeah, yeah, Mithril, yeah, yeah. So, no worries, buddy, no worries. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll hit on the, the gist of it here. Uh, a number of new games were announced over the course of its two-hour runtime, as well as new trailers for previously known titles. Uh, so, it went um, Summer Games Fest, Day of the Devs, and then we saw Devolver afterwards, okay? So, we're going to try to recap as much of it as possible right here, uh, the main parts of it anyways, okay? Retro fans retreat to a new 2.5D game, uh, in the Sonic and Prince of Persia franchises, while Gorehounds got the first Mortal Kombat 1 footage. I just, I, dude, it's so uncreative. Mortal Kombat 1. We already have Mortal Kombat 1. How, what are they going to call the next one? I just can't, dude. Well, we might not, we might not be diving into all of these. Uh, so happy. Here's the deal. I have these two articles here. They're going to recap most of the stuff from yesterday. And a lot of what these are are individual articles about a lot of the, the games that we saw in the actual showcases themselves. So I might not need to hit on all of these. But um, I pulled them up just in case, okay? So we'll just see how it goes this morning, okay? I'm just trying to... There was a, there was a lot of showcase stuff yesterday. So we want to make sure that we're recapping it to the best of our ability. But if we don't need to hit on some of it, if we're getting uh, enough information out of the, the actual summary articles here then i won't need to hit on some of these yeah um a new game from horror legend john carpenter meanwhile final fantasy 7 rebirth got a new trailer along with news that it will arrive on two discs we're going to talk about that we're going to talk about that the show was then followed by so so mithril yeah final fantasy 7 rebirth is coming out on two discs bro you know all this talk we've been having about the physical side of things we've got an article up about it so we'll hit on it in just a bit but Put a tab, put put a tab in that. All right, <laughs> put put a pin in that. I mean, you know, put a pin in that. We'll we'll get back to that. Oh, okay. All right, Mitchell. Uh The show was then followed by Day of the Devs, an indie presentation showing off 15 interesting games from around the world. After that came the latest comedy presentation from Devolver Digital. Watch the full thing again here. I'll link this for you guys if you want to uh, like go back and watch all that that content again. Uh, it's a good like probably four to five hours. Four to five hours worth of content, okay? But we'll try to summarize it the best we can right here. This is like everything that was kind of shown off, okay? Prince of Persia, we have an article up for that. First Mortal Kombat game. I don't have anything up on that because we've already seen stuff previously. Uh, the first trailer for The Witcher 3, uh, Witcher Season 3, we we'll watched that. I'm excited for that, and I'm also sad because that's the last season I'll watch of that. Even if it continues, I will not watch any more of that without uh, Henry Cavill in it. <laughs> I won't do it, dude. I can't. There's no way. Um, Crossfire Sierra Squad um, for PlayStation VR 2. Su Sonic Superstars. Uh, we have that up. Lies of P, which has a, a dedicated September release date now. And a demo is out. Remedy has shown off Alan Wake's 2 first gameplay, which looks great. Spider-Man 2's release date was confirmed. And we got, uh, you know, we got a lot of that in. I'm not going to hit all the Spider-Man 2 stuff. Again, all I'm going to say is I'm glad Spider-Man 2 is releasing soon because then they can get to work on Wolverine. That's what I want. I know Spider-Man games are great. I'm excited for everybody that wants to play them. I don't really care to play them. I want Wolverine. And now that they're releasing Spider-Man 2, they can get to work on Wolverine. John Carpenter's Toxic Commando, new zombie FPS, 
Like a Dragon Gaiden got a new trailer and official release date. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth will release in early 2024 on two discs. Wolverine, do I love Wolverine? Um, <laughs> you just like Jake Joe and all, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that who played him, dude? Isn't that who played him? <laughs> the first uh, Warzone 2 Season 4 trailer uh, showed off the uh, Vondel map. Mobile game Final Fantasy 7 Ever Crisis getting a closed beta on Android. Quantic Dream announces its indie label Spotlight in its first two releases. Annapurna Interactive holds its next game showcase in late June. Twisted Metal TV shows clip uh, shows off Sweet Tooth. That was a really funny trailer, by the way. Um, they were singing the Thong song. It was funny. Uh, Fortnite Chapter 4 Season 3, Wilds gets a Summer Game Fest trailer. Everything that was announced, Day of the Devs. Shadows of the Damned is getting a remaster, and Grasshopper Manufacturer is holding its first ever direct next week. Okay, so I'll link this. That didn't really summarize things very well. Luckily, I have all these up, okay? Wolverine's always been one of my favorite, like, because he's not a... He's more of an anti-hero. I always liked Wolverine because he was kind of a like a, a rogue hero, if you will. He never really con- wanted to conform to what all the other ones were doing. You know, he kind of was his own bro. He was his own his own person. You know what I mean? And uh, while I mean, he went through different phases of it and stuff. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mithril, yeah, for sure. You know, um, so I, I mean, I, I, I had old Wolverine comics back whenever I was a kid and stuff. I just dug I, and I wasn't a big comic book uh, guy or anything, but I just I liked Wolverine, dude. I really liked Wolverine. All uh, I always have. And then, you know, the movies were pretty dope, dude. They did a good job, I thought, with the movies, you know, and how do you not dig Hugh Jackman? You know what I mean? Hugh Jackman. <laughs> He's great, dude. Um, so. Oh, dude, Donnie Darko is one of my favorite movies of all time, Happy. What did I... Uh, dude, I just saw a movie here recently that kind of gave me vibes of like a modern Donnie Darko movie. What was the name of that? Hold on. Did I tell you about it? I told I told uh the stream the other I just watched this. Uh here dude. Check this out. Yeah. Check this out. Uh I'm not gonna watch the trailer, but if you guys haven't seen this. I was really kind of blown away by this movie. I just watched it randomly. I came across it. What did I watch it on? Like Prime or Netflix or something, dude? Just like about a week ago. Um, and I know it looks like like a love story and stuff, but it's uh, diagnosed with a mental illness halfway through his senior year of high school. A witty, in- introspective teen struggles to keep it a secret while falling in love with a brilliant classmate. Inspires him to not be defined by his condition. It's about this kid who gets diagnosed with like um, schizophrenia and stuff, and it it like the entire movie. It's dude, it's got it's a roller coaster of emotions, dude. It's got a lot of really funny parts in it and stuff too, but then it's there's a lot of dark to it and everything as well. Um, so this this kid is diagnosed with schizophrenia, and he kind of knows that something's wrong for a long time, but it's he's always been like that, you know. But it ends up kind of coming to more of becoming more of an issue at this point in his life and this is where it all takes place you know and it's like so a lot of it's looking through the world through his eyes and you see like you see what he sees and you hear what he hears and stuff like that right so um and it's really really wild I haven't seen that yet, dude, but I really want to. I really want to. I love Brendan Fraser, dude. Uh, but this is a cool this is a cool movie if anybody's interested in, in a, a, a solid jam to watch, dude. I really, really liked this. Yeah. What's up, Peter? What's going on, man? Happy Friday, brother. So uh, we'll go ahead and, and take a look. Uh, so that, that summary didn't really uh, – that's why I pulled up all these articles. So we'll end up hitting a lot of these articles now. But – 
I'll do my best to not drag out the news too long today, but there's going to be, look, uh, this is that time of the year. We're getting all these showcases and we have, people have to understand that we're probably going to be hitting some fairly decent news segments because of all the information we're getting out of the gaming industry. Okay. So lots of tabs. Yeah. But there's a lot of news, a lot of information coming through the industry right now. Okay. Yeah, happy. Highly recommend, dude. It was a it was a great flip and watch, dude. It's not. I mean, like I said, it's it's not Donnie Darko, but it gave me some of those vibes. You know what I'm saying? It gave me some of. Those, I, I even said it, dude. I said it to my my wife. We watched it together, and uh, I, I was talking to my wife. And I was like, dude, this this gives me like modern day Donnie Darko vibes. And literally, like a, as we were finishing the movie, I was just really really immersed, and I, I loved it, dude. I loved it. It's a great, great movie. I thought anyways. Um, so Devolver was the last showcase. And let me just start off by saying Devolver is like my favorite publisher, dude. I love Devolver. First and foremost, Devolver is a publisher that is always looking for weird quirky, dark, odd kinds of games to uh, put under their label. They like that stuff. And I like that stuff. And therefore, you know, I, I gravitate towards a lot of the games they publish. And um, I've played a lot of the games they publish. And um, they, they do a good job. The other thing is, um, <clears throat> I love their showcases. Yesterday's was was a bit different than what we usually get from Devolver though. It was the same, but it was different too. So it was weird. They're always weird. But quite often they're they're real, real humorous. They're always very adult. And uh, yo, random out time. Let's get it. Yesterday's to me had a lot of underlying kind of jabs at a lot of the rest of the video gaming industry right now and especially in regards to their use of AI and that's what yesterday's um showcase from Devolver looked like to me whoa did we just become best friends holy crap <laughs> nice miss bat all right dude <laughs> let's go mithril um so it, it was still it was you know it was still a wild showcase but it was also a bit different than what you usually get uh i you know i promote devolver all the time for their showcases they do a very good job production wise they're always weird and dark and odd and and usually really funny. This one was just not quite as comedic as it was like I saw what they were doing. To me, it was very obvious they were taking a jab at a lot of the rest of the industry that is just trying to incorporate so much AI into their stuff nowadays. Um, but I love Devolver, dude. I all I have for a long time. Uh, Devolver Showcase was unhinged as always framing its showcase around the um, completely true to life video game mascot Volvi they put fictional and crossed it out it, it's absolutely fictional uh, it began by running through the character's design including his one giant hand for gaming a fictional history of the character right so everybody was like who is this what is this I was like dude they just like made this up but it did look like they were like going through this like history uh, a fictional history of the character during the golden age of the 90s video games, his downfall during the gaming's edgier phase in the 2000s, and his modern day revival as a soulless robot called Volve E that generates games via AI. Uh, here are the, all the games the publisher announced created by Volve E. Yeah, Sledge Life 2, Wizard with a Gun looked cool. Talos Principle 2, our buddy Pinky is so stoked about that. Baby Steps looks really weird and i can't wait to uh get into that one dude baby steps looks really is that on was that on steam hold on 
It has to be, dude. Did you guys see this? Did you guys see this weirdness? Check this out. Nate! Nate! Nate, buddy, family meeting, let's go. Are you bringing him food again? I, not we right now. talked about this. Not right now. You are okay? literally killing him with these pizzas. You he, just want to throw him out on the street? No, I'm not, I, he's 35. Want I want him to have some kind of discipline. Yeah. Nate, if you can hear my voice, I want you to come up here and start having a family meeting. <laughs> <laughs> For the creators of Ape Out. What the hell? And getting over it. Dude, I cannot wait for this. God, dude, this game is gonna drive me mad, but I am totally gonna play it. So, if you don't know what getting over it is, it's like a side scrolling, uh, kind of platforming game, but it's very difficult where you're trying to, like, just I didn't. Yeah, let's go back in time to when you didn't. No, I was just trying to catch it. With my, uh, sorry, with your foot, my, yeah, you tried to catch it. I saw it was starting to go, and I just tried to. You just kicked. You thought I'll give it a good kick no, to counteract the fall. Yeah, I was just trying to study it. I might over. Yeah, you might, you I, might have. I, I yeah, over. You might have. You might have I love this dude's onesie I'm too. Over steadied. Well, it's not steady now. No, I, well. See you later. So, uh, Wanker. Yeah. Wearing thermals, dude. Uh, <laughs> Bro, bro. I will I will share this with you. I want to play this game. I'm calling it right now. This is a 2024's game of the year, all right? Baby steps. I'm calling it, dude. <laughs> Human Fall Flat too. also. Yeah, 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 Mithril, yeah. <laughs> True, what's up? <laughs> True, that's that Baby Steps game that we watched uh, during the showcases yesterday. Yeah. Um, here is a Wizard with a Gun. This one looks really cool. This looks really cool. Yeah, doesn't it look great? Dude, I can't wait to play that game. This one looks pretty gnarly too. We're just recapping a lot of what we watched yesterday. You, you know what I mean? That we knew that was going to be a lot of the news today, but we got a few things to talk about regarding some of it too. So, how you doing today, True? Young chief rising and a weaver of bone. Remember, remember, the gate was thrown wide, the horror inside, the riders drew iron. Before it oh, I'm great, done, friendo. Thanks for asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't get quite enough sleep last night. I was kind of tossing. Other than that, I'm good. Okay. Tentacles, baby. That was very loud, guys. Sorry. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I was too, man. I, I only got like a few hours of sleep, really. I mean, I slept well once I finally went to sleep, but man, I was just kind of like laying around in bed. It felt like forever. Starting to doubt my regular... You can't say that, dude. You haven't played that. You haven't played Baby Steps yet. You can't say that. You can't doubt it if you haven't played. You can't knock it until you try it, Doug. 
<laughs> I agree, Mithril. <laughs> yeah. This game looks dope. This looks like this could be some fun co-op stuff. You know? I love these kinds of games, though. Love this stuff. Wizard with a gun. Talos Principle 2. We've seen this trailer a number of times already, so I'll link this if you guys want to watch it. But we've seen it. There was the Baby Steps thing again. Human Fall Flat 2 also, which is basically what you would expect from Human Fall Flat 1. Uh, I'll link this for you guys. I'd be down to play some humans fall flat uh, in uh, the channel or in the community here, you know, while we're live and stuff with peeps, with you peeps, dude, at some point. Devolver, that was the last showcase. So uh, let's dive into some of this. It sounds like a, a band name. Yeah, you're not wrong, dude. Wizard with a gun. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd go see him just off the name. That could go a lot of different ways, though, couldn't it? <laughs> Lord of the Rings is back with a brand new adventure and some familiar voices. Look, uh, dude, I'm not really... This game does not look very good to me right now. I don't know what it is. Um, I'm, I'm kind of... I don't know. Let's watch it. You guys tell me what you think. I'm, I'm not really seeing it, dude. Our story is more than what hobbits and elves know. It is time we told it ourselves. With hammer and axe, we mine and scum. I feel like there are so many games that are just trying Across to play off of like Earth, it's Lord of the Rings. Delving for riches. You know? Yet the greatest treasure remains. Oh, above Gothic, I'm sorry. Moria. Yeah, I don't I mean I, again, I, I could be totally wrong, you know? But I just feel like there's so many companies that like grab an, an, an IP that has a popular name. Like, look, I mean, this looks like a game from like 2003, dude. Rally together. Yeah, I know, Mithril. Yeah, we've talked about it. I mean, dude, I like Lord of the Rings, too. I'm not like an uber fan or anything, but I just hate when like... You got kicked from a server? Game has your axe. Nice. Yeah, it just, I mean, I don't understand, like, why they're, like, because, I mean, Gollum was the same way, you know? Gollum, and not that every game needs to look, like, incredibly visually mind-blowing or anything, but just a lot of what I'm seeing, like, It just, it's not standing out to me. I don't see anything that goes, man, I want to play that. You know what I mean? It's just. Yo, I'm sorry, Gothic. Don't know what went down, but maybe you're better off not being a part of it or something. You know what I mean? <sighs> I don't know. A Legolas fan, yeah, true. Right on. You like that that bloom? You like that bloomage, do you? Huh? Is that why you like? Is that why you like? Yeah. <laughs> I figured. <laughs> it's not. It's not the character itself. <laughs> Just because I said I'm having a panic attack or bad anxiety, really. You got booted from a server because you said you were having 
some anxiety issues. Jesus, what is wrong with people, dude? Okay, well, <clears throat> I'm sorry that you're having some some uh, some feelings like that today. That sucks, but you know you can hang out with us all the time. You know that. I hope you start feeling better. Yeah, I respect that. True. Yeah. It was probably some other Discord server or something. Yeah. We don't need details or whatever. Unless you just want to <laughs> inform people of where they might want to stay away from or something. I don't know. It sounds like a sketchy place. I don't know. How 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 are people just that... I don't know, unmindful of, of people and their, you know, their issues and stuff. That's just terrible. I don't know. That sucks, Gothic. But uh, it's good to see you. Happy Friday, friendo. You just hang out with us, man. Relax. Take it easy. Try to try to get over uh, those issues you're dealing with. You know, I hope you're able to. Yeah. Um, independent developer free range games and publisher North beach games today shared a first look at the co-op survival crafting gameplay of Lord of the Rings return to Moria and a brand new trailer debuted at summer games fest 2023. Um, console versions of the game are in active development for the PS five and Xbox series X and S console systems and are scheduled to launch simultaneously with the PC version via the Epic game store in fall of this year. Um, Base building, exploration, co-op, multiplayer, uncover magic artifacts, comprehensive dwarf builder. I don't know, man. Uh, just from what I've seen from it so far, it just nothing's really standing out for me, dude. Wait, what? My bad. So, I don't know. Uh, if anybody ends up playing it, let me know. I won't be playing this on release. I just won't. I just don't see it, dude. I don't see it. Um, so... We'll keep track. We'll see if anything more comes uh, closer to the release and, and see if it looks any better or anything for me. Uh, it just looks kind of blah. It just looks like mediocre at best to me. I could be wrong. I'm just going off of what I've seen so far. <sighs> Horror Souls like Lies of P just dropped a demo and release date at Summer Games Fest. Dude, I have been following this game for a long time. I really, really hope it's good. It's got a cool premise around it. Um, you know, the original Pinocchio stories are very dark. Um, it, you know, Disney has Disney-fied everything. They've taken traditional uh, folk tales and, and fairy tales, which are traditionally very ominous and dark scary kinds of of lore and they've turned it into these like everything's beautiful and and very foo-foo kind of tells of of happiness and and um you know this is more of a take back to the look of i think the um the dark side of pinocchio you know Oh, dude, folk tales are terrible. They were meant to scare kids, is what they were originally. But they were they were gnarly, and I love them for that. Um, and Pinocchio is one of. Those, I mean, even if you go back and look at the Disney show, the original Pinocchio, Disney's Pinocchio, was would not be made today. <laughs> it would not be made today like that. <laughs> But even then, you know, it's it's not dark like the original Pinocchio tells were. Um, and uh, it's cool to see a developer taking Pinocchio and twisting it into like a Souls-like game. I think that's pretty cool. Um, I've been really interested in that, that premise uh, of this game uh, ever since we came across it, man, probably a year and a half, two years ago. And uh, the fact that it's going to be coming out in a couple months – is really really interesting wait september now right um oh august this year yeah it was slated for august now they said september right isn't that what they said because we, we i had it as august and then the the uh yesterday it said september right yep yep that's right so um 
I'll pull it up. But yeah, it was originally this year, earlier said that it was going to launch in August. That's what I had on our schedule. Then yesterday it came out and said that um, this is going to be, in fact, a September 19th release of this year. That's already on the schedule. Um, Liza P demo is available to download on PC via Steam, PS5, PS4, Xbox One, and Series X. Uh, I'll pull it up real quick so you guys can see it if you didn't get to take a look at it. Nate! 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 Nate, buddy! Family meeting! Let's this is the trailer from yesterday as well. Basically, like, Souls, Pinocchio, right? That looks so evil, I love it. Look at this tree. It's it's in the shape of a person. I noticed that yesterday. And like all the uh, branches coming down were like hair. So that could maybe be like an NPC or something. Who knows? Or an enemy. Play the demo now. If you want the link, I'll link it to you. There you go. Very cool, very cool, man. I'm really psyched about that. That was that was one of my big hypes yesterday was seeing more lies of P. The biggest for me was probably Path of Exile, which we'll touch on here in a bit. Um, new Diablo 4 update tweaks rogues, bosses, and dungeons. The latest hotfix for Blizzard's D4 is now live. Looks to make balance changes to a handful of aspects of the action RPG. Since releasing in early access nearly one week ago, and full access about three days ago, Blizzard has already released a number of smaller hotfixes for D4 that balance certain elements of the game. Now that trend has continued once again as the developer looks to make Diablo 4 moderately improved with each day. Live now across PlayStation, Xbox, and PC, Diablo 4's newest patch features some overhauls for bosses, dungeons, and rogue class. Bosses have only seen a couple of tweaks that involve the level 100 pinnacle boss and those seen in world tier 3 and 4. Dungeons, in turn, have seen some previous problems rectified while the rogue class now has a new cooldown that matches what was previously shown in game all in all none of these changes are too big but they should be very much welcomed by the title's massive player base moving forward it seems like blizzard should continue to push out smaller hot fixes of the nature of this nature for d4 all of these future updates for the game will likely scale in importance but the fact that blizzard continues to release them at a high pace is good to see get a full look at the patch notes for the d4 update down below Boss changes, dungeons, monster changes, class changes, all that stuff. If you're interested, I'll link it, okay? Um, I don't think I have Mithril. Fall Guys reveals Tomb Raider crossover. A new collaboration has been revealed for Fall Guys. <clears throat> <clears throat> me, me, me. Okay, I think we're good. This time bringing a skin based on Tomb Raider star Laura Croft. No details have been revealed about the skin, <clears throat> but it will be part of the game's next fame pass. 
Skin was revealed in a new teaser trailer where a character can be seen war- wearing Laura's trademark blue tank top and khaki shorts. The look is completed with a wig that captures Laura's classic brown hair. All in all, it's a very cool design, and Tomb Raider fans are definitely going to want this one. Teaser featuring Laura Croft in Fall Guys can be found in the tweet embedded below. Let's see this. <laughs> Yo, this is dope. Check it out. <laughs> Laura looking good. That's great. Nice, nice, nice. All right. Uh Dang it, whatever, dude. Okay, let's let's uh let's dive into this real quick. So, we've talked a lot here recently about the issue of physical video games, right? And uh the reason it's become such a hot topic is because games are becoming so big, you can't fit them on one disc. And this has kind of come to a head with the release of things like Jedi Survivor, which should have never released when it did anyways, but um, it did. And if you wanted a physical copy of the game, you could buy it, but you wouldn't be able to play that game unless you downloaded another 40 to 50 gigs worth of data to be installed uh, along with the playable disc. And which kind of for a lot of people defeats the purpose of buying physical copies of games, right? A lot of people buy physical copies because they don't have very good internet or they don't have internet at all. There are other reasons, nostalgia, um, collectors, things like that. But there's a large population of people that are gamers that still don't have great connectivity, you know, and so they go for physical um, PC has gone away from physical for quite a while now, but the console side is still there very much. And, um, we're seeing different developers and publishers address this situation differently currently, because ultimately you've got the switch that runs like basically SD cards, right? Which can be, um, filled with more storage space than an optical media can. So they don't run into as much of an issue, but like the Xbox and PlayStation, they're still running on optical drives. And even though, you know, the, the highest capacity, you know, that they can run is Blu-ray. And even those discs aren't close to the, the amount of storage space needed for a single disc to uh, run a physical copy of a game. And so through the history of gaming, it was like, normal for a, 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 an amount of time to have numerous discs, right? But that's been a thing of the past for quite some time. And developers don't want to go back to that because it, it's expensive, right? So we've seen things happen, like I said, with Jedi Survivor with a physical disc where you still have to download data to be installed. We're not talking about day one patch stuff. We're talking about data that has to be installed to play the physical copy of the game that you, you also bought. Uh, to Alan Wake 2 coming out where they go, the game's too big. We're not going to be pushing out physical copies at all. It's just digital. That's all you get. That doesn't mean there won't be some places that might make some, you know, collaborate with the developer to get uh, the rights to be able to push out some um, physical copies of the game eventually or something like that. But out the gate, there won't be anything. There might not ever, you know. And uh, now we're, we're getting Final Fantasy VII Rebirth that has decided to go ahead and push out the game on two discs, right? This is what I've been talking about for a while, though. I, I think the next generation, I'm actually surprised this generation of consoles still went with optical drives. I don't think they need to completely get away from optical drives because I think they need to get better with backwards compatibility, meaning that you should still be able to have an optical drive in these consoles so that you can play your old physical games if you still have them from any of their previous generations. But we know how these businesses address that kind of stuff, especially Nintendo and PlayStation. They're not very nice with backwards compatibility. Xbox is getting better, right? But um, I don't think that the next generation of consoles is really going to be able to continue to use optical drives for physical gaming 
if they plan on still doing physical releases, it's just not enough. You're going to have to move into something, some, some other form of, of media, you know, a different, a different medium for, for, uh, releasing physical games. It's just not enough, man. Um, so let's dive into this now. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is so big that it's coming out on two discs. And uh, the grand finale of Summer Game Fest 2023 went out on a high note with brand new footage of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which is now slated for an early 2024 release date. The game is so big that it will release on two discs. Um, FF7 Rebirth is the second of the three planned uh, games in the Final Fantasy VII Remake trilogy, starting with 2020's Final Fantasy VII Remake. That game only covered the initial Midgar section of the game, though it expanded upon and added new content and features to flesh it out. With the conclusion of that title, as well as the episode Intermission DLC, we've only had a small glimpse of how, uh, as to how Rebirth will handle the game once going to the open world. Trailer shows off quite a bit of footage, opening with news footage of the Avalanche crew being wheeled away on stretchers after a tornado apparently struck, uh, stuck, I think it's supposed to be struck, Sector 2. From there, we cut to the cast exploring several open natural environments on foot and riding chocobos. Many other iconic shots show scenes such as the meeting at Cosmo Canyon with uh, Bugenhagen, the flashback of Nibelheim, and what even appears to be the Northern Crater. Um, new combat footage is similar to Rebirth, but with some notable additions. Red um, 13 and Yuffie are both confirmed to be playable. There are also look to be team-up style limit break moves. See Tifa and Aerith, Yuffie and Red 13, as well as Cloud and Barrett appear to pull off some of these moves. Trailer ends with the big mystery of Sephiroth stating that you know that I killed her, so who is she? Perhaps referring to Aerith, but while showing scenes of Tifa to perhaps imply a change in the timeline. While Final Fantasy VII Rebirth didn't get a release date as we'd hoped, it was narrowed down. Initially, the game was simply stated as coming this winter, but will now arrive on PS5 in early 2024 and come on two discs. So, being somebody that, that always played Final Fantasy games, it's actually a little bit nostalgic, and we talked about this a little bit yesterday when this was announced. It's a little bit nostalgic to have multiple discs on a Final Fantasy game, but again, I don't think devs are really looking to do this very much again, you know? Um, it's expensive. It's expensive. The more discs you have to print for each physical release, the the less you're making on, even though they are now doing 70 bucks a pop, you know, the less money they're going to make. And most devs don't want to, don't want to get to the point of where we're, we're back into a state that we've been away from for so long of having to, you know, release multiple discs or or physical pieces of media for for one game right um so i really i truly don't see games continuing to be released in future generations of consoles on optical i think they still need an optical drive because i think that these console companies the developers console developers they need to be better about backwards compatibility and they need to continue to give people the option of having um, the optical drives to put their previous gen games in to play on the newer gen consoles. But they're going to have to move over to something else, in my opinion. I don't know what their thought process is right now. That's just initially what I'm thinking. Um, well, yeah, I mean, that's what I've, I've talked about that too, man. No, PC's not at all. I've talked about that. PC has been away from physical for a long time, and I'm not talking about PC. I'm talking about console. PC has been PC has has embraced the digital space for a long time now. We've uh, the PC players have have been a part of the the digital frontier in gaming for quite some time, but. Console has not been nearly as fast to uh, adopt that, you know. The console is still, and and I mean, I I still think that the next gen consoles, I don't think they're going to go totally digital, dude. I just don't think I don't see them doing it. I just don't see it happening. I I I think it would be better. I think it would be better, but I don't I don't know that they'll do it. 
I mean, it's taken them this long. It's it's slowly happening. Here's the big issue. Here's the big issue. Look, they're kind of shooting themselves in the foot a little bit, if you ask me. Here's the big issue. Consoles come out with modern new gen consoles come out with still crap storage space. Right? Honestly, they don't come out with very much storage space. Um, Mithril, same here, dude. I haven't had, I haven't put a DVD drive or a Blu-ray drive or anything in a PC in a long time. I just have, uh, I have USB drives for it just in case. That's it. I've got a couple of them floating around here. That's it, man. Um, I have an old PC that still has a Blu-ray, uh, drive in it. A great one, a Samsung. I love it, dude. <laughs> but that's it. It's an, it's an old, it's a PC I built back in like 2012. Um, but consoles, consoles are kind of, kind of hurting themselves. If you ask me, they, they, they don't want to put big storage space in their consoles, right? So a lot of people are reluctant to, to adopt fully the digital space, right? Because they don't have a ton of space to put all those games on the, uh, a big hard drive. They don't have a big hard drive, right? And there are even some of these manufacturers like Xbox that have made expansion storage proprietary. So they have contracted out, I think it's Western Digital and Seagate are the only companies that can make expansion storage for the Xbox console. And if you want a terabyte of space, it's around $200, which is absurd. That's like a 300% markup from what a terabyte of solid state drive would actually cost you on a PC. <laughs> it's like, what's up, dude? So, I mean, how, how, how do they expect their clientele, their customers to adopt into a digital space of gaming when they're not giving them enough space on a hard drive to install the games they want to have installed all at one time, you know? So I, I feel like console players are not doing themselves any favors right now either, you know? Right, right, right. Now, like a PlayStation, you can go buy a bigger you know, hard drive to throw in yourself and stuff. But Xbox isn't that easy. And so they're not doing themselves any favors, man. You know, um, in my opinion, ultimately, if the console space wants to transform over into uh, digital gaming, just like PC has, they've got to start pushing out their consoles with much better expansive storage systems otherwise gamers just aren't going to do it all the way you know i just don't see it so i don't know we got a lot of things uh, I think not us, but the, you know, the, the, uh, the console developers themselves have, have some big issues to tackle moving forward, uh, and, and what, how they're going to address this issue. It's a big deal. I think. Wait, what? I got the Apple Gaming Emulator for PC only games. It's free and it works like an eggplant. <laughs> Yo, <did> it, was that good? Yo, sick, dude. That'd be great if you got to start playing V Rising with us. That'd be awesome, dude. <laughs> True, do you like my song? I didn't write it. I just sang it. 
I can't take the credit. That's Sayek's song. <laughs> you didn't say you sounded like Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. <laughs> yeah, I don't ever know either, dude. I don't even. I, I knew what you meant. That's all that matters, dude. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's funny, dude. Oh Jesus, that'd be sick, dude. I'd love to have you come play V Rising with us, dude. The game's a lot of fun. Great movie, yeah. It's a fantastic movie. I actually, uh, I had a buddy of mine, uh, I was friends with actually, he, so, so, um, his wife worked with my wife and, and, um, before they were married, I was friends with her and him before they even got married. But, but we used to, you know, hang out and party together sometimes and stuff like that. And every time she'd get a little bit tipsy, you know, uh, drinking, dude, she would always want me to do Matthew McConaughey lines from Dazed and Confused. <laughs> Bro, I sing all the time. I sing all the time. I'm not a very good singer, but I sing all the time. You do it so well. Yeah, I don't even hear it. I just, you know, it's, I've also got like hairdressers. You know, uh, up here where I live, I've got uh, a, a lady that does my hair and uh, the other lady that runs the shop, um, I don't know if she owns it, but she runs it. They actually call me Matthew. They call me Matthew because the first time I ever called up there, um, I talked to the manager and she was telling everybody that um, she got off, she just got off the phone with Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> And then whenever I came in, they were like, oh, my God, they're like, you sound just like him and you kind of resemble him a little bit sometimes, too, you know, and, and my hair was like not this long. It was kind of like long on top and everything kind of like his was just on accident. And so now every time I come in, they're like, hey, it's Matthew, you know, <laughs> which is funny. You know, I think it's hilarious. It's like this running joke at the, uh, at the place where I get my hair cut. <laughs> Psych. All right, dude. Yeah, the hair is much longer now than it was. It was like shorter and, and it looked more like uh McConaughey's does most of the time, but it's getting kind of, it's getting really long now, dude. It's getting pretty long. I'm gonna I'm gonna let it get like shoulders probably and, and I'll let it stop there. Yeah. I love Days and Confused. I haven't seen it in a long time though. It's a good movie. All right, let's see here. So, uh, shout out to Cash. Casual uh, showed me this yesterday whenever it popped off on Twitter. Hugh Jackman Wolverine hair. We could, dude. Look at it. Look how long it's getting, dude. It's getting long. The first time I ever grew my hair kind of shaggy, I just thought my hair was going to be straight, and it's like kind of wavy, curly. It's kind of wild. Um, Universal Pictures is going from the Mushroom Kingdom to the Kingdom of Hyrule. Studio which partnered with Nintendo for Illumination's animated 1.3 billion blockbuster Super Mario Brothers movie is reportedly close to closing a big deal with video gaming company for the Legend of Zelda movie. According to industry insider Jeff Snyder on the Hot Mike podcast, Universal's Illumination will develop the animated Zelda movie as the next big Illumination Nintendo franchise. After Mario scored as the highest grossing film of 2023 so far and the highest grossing video game movie ever. In April, Mario and Zelda creator uh, Miyamoto told the Japanese outlet uh, Shimbun that there is no doubt Nintendo would make future films after the success of the Super Mario Bros. movie. Um, That box office high score could cost Universal. The Comcast-owned studio is expected to pay Nintendo a pretty penny for Zelda, according to Snyder. Right.
Oh, okay, yeah. Uh Yeah, it did really well. I was just talking about a lot of the uh history of this and Mario Brothers movie and stuff too. You can read all of it if you want. But the gist we got, man, the gist we got. The Rock is Link, yeah, that's what we were talking about yesterday, right? It's gotta either be Henry Cavill, The Rock, or Bautista as Link. Right? It's got to be one of those, yeah? I personally want to see Jack Black play Link. That's my go-to. Jack Black is Link. And I want Christopher Walken to play Ganondorf. That would be the best movie ever. <laughs> we'll get Johnny Depp to play Zelda. It would be amazing, dude. <laughs> Bro, what a movie that would be. <laughs> oh dude oh wait only real choice is princess leia hair yeah dude yeah oh yeah has everybody not seen me with the princess leia buns who has not seen the the um well that's why we're saying that psych I mean, we were making, we were joking around about it yesterday about how funny it would be to like cast a big, big dude as, uh, as Link, you know? Oh, oh my God. All right. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. I got you. Oh, it's probably pinned. It's pinned in the discord. I got it. Here you go. So uh, that's my um, don't let it fool you. Don't let that initial. Uh, so it's a Halloween costume transformation. OK, so get ready for it. Yeah, it's like I know. I mean, they'll, they'll obviously cast somebody that I don't think they need to be scrawny. It'd be somebody more like Tom Holland or something. You know what I mean? Not somebody just tiny, somebody of smaller stature, but somebody that's kind of <clears throat> probably a little bit muscular too. Link's not, Link's not just like wimpy looking, you know what I mean? But he's of smaller stature, obviously. <clears throat> but that's why we were just like joking around. Enough of Tom Holland. I was just giving an example, dude. He's not a big dude, but he he's... You know, he's he's muscular. He's he's very fit, you know. I bought that, dude. <laughs> I bought that specifically. That that's actually a, a costume, dude, for, for the uh the Princess Leia Jabba the Hutt slave outfit, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> you guys I forgot there's like so many people that are new that haven't actually seen this dude yeah that was just this past uh, or, I mean god dude it's been like nine months now that was the, the last uh, Halloween yeah <laughs> I, I got you psych I got you dude <laughs> Dude. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, dude, my tattoos are actually posted. Or that my chest one is. Yeah, that's posted in the tavern here. I'll just pull it up. That's that's linked in the tavern. Or that might be the art section. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah, this is my... Uh, Pay no attention to the muffin, the muffin man. Hold on. Yeah, so that's my most recent piece I've gotten done. <clears throat> it's in the art section. Yeah, I've got a good artist out here. Uh, it's only the second person that's ever done work on me, actually. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's my entire torso is covered, man. <laughs> Yeah, bro. Yeah, I mean, it goes all the way below my, like my waistline and everything too. So, so my first tattoo was actually one that's over here on my side, and um, then I, these are these are old pieces too. These are old pieces as well. Um, but all of this is uh, new as of uh, last winter. <clears throat> this actually is my favorite piece of artwork ever. Uh, it's by an artist. Uh, if you know who M.C. Escher is. And uh, my favorite animal is uh, the octopus. So I'm a fan of the mythological kraken. You know what I mean? So uh, I just had it all incorporated. So yeah, MC Escher is my favorite artist of all time. Uh, I love art, dude. I love art. And so that's why you guys hear me talking about tentacles all the time, dude. I, I love oct octopus. Is my favorite animal. I love kraken. I love the kraken. I think the kraken's a, a cool mythological creature. And and um, if you couldn't tell, these were turned into uh, suckers right there, yeah. So um, that was a little bit brutal. <laughs> that was a little bit brutal. Those got turned into suckers, dude. You see that? <laughs> yeah, it hurt. Yeah, it hurt. Yeah, it hurt. Yeah. That's what my kids always say when we go to the pool. They're like, release the Kraken, you know? Yeah. So... Uh, there's a few different pictures in the uh, Discord if you want to see them, but yeah, that was my that's my most recent. Yeah, uh, I uh, I enjoy seeing people's uh, people's tattoos and stuff. I love art, dude. I love art. I suck at art, but I love art. I love art. Um, like that that eye that eye. I've got a framed picture of that. That's that's my favorite piece of artwork ever. I love M C Escher, dude. I like, uh, you know, Salvador Dali. I like, I like stuff like that. And, and, uh, Escher has just always been my favorite dude. I love Escher's stuff. Oh yeah. 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 So I'll tell you, I'm, uh, I already, I think I already know what I'm going to dress up as this year. I've never done it, but it's one of my favorite characters. So if you can't tell what that is, I'll probably be doing that this year. I got to start working on the costume though. So, yeah, here you go. If you want to read more about this, we got Zelda coming as an adaptation now, it looks like. Oh, yeah, yeah, Mithril. Yeah, dude, those are gnarly, yeah. Yeah, psych, yeah. Oh. Yep, yep. Probably a pretty safe bet there, dude. Yeah. Because the hair's, the hair's at a good length for it, you know what I'm saying? The hair's at a good length for it. And I don't know if I'll end up cutting this off at some point or whatever, but uh, while the hair's at a good length for that, that's probably why I'll, I'll, I'll probably go ahead and do it now. <clears throat> Horror legend John Carpenter is making a new video game. All right. Uh, so we saw this yesterday, but let's take a look at this. All right. So if you guys haven't taken a look, there's like some of the, the, you know, there's certain stuff that gets pinned into like the art channel and the tavern and stuff that if you haven't, you know, historically, and if you're kind of new-ish to the community, you might not have seen some of that stuff. Um, so you can go take a look at some of that, that kind of stuff if you want. There's not a ton of it, but some of the more important stuff I pin in there. Yeah, I forgot about this. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to not get DMC eight here. <clears throat> Sorry, forgot. Yeah, I know. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm gonna leave that song off now. 
I remember yesterday we were watching this. I just remembered. I don't have my headset on, but I was like, oh, uh, yeah, pretty sure this is uh, one where I need to turn the, the music off for. Yeah, kind of. A little bit, yeah. Twitch does a pretty good job anymore of just like automatically like uh, muting that stuff out. But um, if I wanted to like upload it to YouTube as well, then, you know, sometimes there can be issues and things. So I'll just mute it. Toxic Commando. Yeah. So um, horror legend nerd John Carpenter is helping to make a new game called John Carpenter's Toxic Commando. Based on a brief trailer, it looks like you'll be taking on hordes of zombies on a first-person shooter. Fortunately, there were a lot of cars featured in the trailer that were used to fend off the enemies. Carpenter is known for his work on some iconic horror franchises, including Halloween and The Thing, but he's also a big gaming nerd. Hmm. Addicted to Fallout 76 and loved Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Uh, Toxic Commando is going to launch sometime in 2024 for PS5, Xbox Series X, S, and PC. Developed by Saber Interactive and Focus Entertainment. All right. Here you go. Sounds like a joke game. Yeah. We'll see. There's so many it, There's so many that are similar to that. You know, it's like, it, what, is it gonna, what's going to make it stand out? You know what I mean? Witchfire gets a new trailer and early access launch date. All right. Witchfire, uh, we've been watching this for a while, revealed a long time ago, back in 2017 to be precise. During the Summer showcase, uh, summer Game Fest showcase yesterday, a new trailer was dropped for the game going hand-in-hand -hand with an early access release date, September 20th of 2023. Um, a new snippet, uh, so a new trailer was revealed in the showcase yesterday. Most important takeaway here is the fact that pers prospective fans will be able to get their hands on it very soon. Um, Exciting gunplay fused with spellcrafting, high octane, exciting, looks really good, it's unique too, be a seamless game with no cutscenes, some roguelike elements that make it more challenging than your average first person shooter. Um, exclusivity uh, on the Epic Game Store later this year, in early access at least. Uh, the game looks cool, but I'm worried about its... Uh, what I've seen of it looks like it might possibly have just a bit too much repetitiveness. I don't know though. Let's uh, let's pull this up. Let's pull this up. Pretty sure it's Sabre, right? Sabre? <laughs> right, right, yeah. That's what I thought you were going for there, dude, yeah. I can't remember exactly how they uh, they did it on the office though, how they were they were pronouncing it, but that was funny, man. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, what do you guys think about how this looks? You know, if you want to watch it again, I'll link it to you. Yeah, it does look intense. I mean, um, it's just everything I've seen. I don't know. I don't know how. I haven't seen anything else, but. I haven't seen anything else in the game but the combat. <laughs> and it just looks like they're showing me the same thing over and over and over. Every time they come out with a new trailer, it's just like, just it's just that combat. Just seeing that combat. Just that same stuff over and over. And I'm like, is there going to be more to it? Is that all it is? You know? So I don't know.
Doom Hex. Yeah, it doesn't mean it's going to be bad or anything. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, Mithril, yeah. Yeah, psych, that's that's kind of where I'm sitting with it right now. It's like, it looks okay, I guess, yeah. I'm just not, like, super thrilled or anything, you know? I It looks better to me than than the uh, Lord of the Rings game we just saw earlier today. I'll, tell, I'll say that. Throne of Liberty gets a new cinematic trailer. Uh, Amazon's much talked about MMORPG uh, that features all kinds of elements from PvP, PvE, combat, and conquest battles to the ability to fight as animal-human hybrids. Just received an all-new trailer during the Summer Game Fest showcase. We saw it yesterday. We'll touch on it again. Um, been in development since at least 2011. Still on the horizon with NCSoft apparently wor- uh, hard at work as we speak. 2011? What year is it? We see a fairly fantastic game showcase in all its computer-generated glory, but there's still no real date for the release of this long-awaited, beleaguered title. What? Unconfirmed at present, thought to be releasing quarter four of this year i would say don't if it's been in development since 2011 and it's still not released i wouldn't i wouldn't count your chickens there uh if you know what i mean i'd probably bet more about 2024 um let me see if i can pull up the on liberty Dude, that's a long time. Our guiding star has shattered. So this is what we saw yesterday too. I mean, I I didn't. Here's my thing about MMOs, dude. I feel like MMOs are really hard to get right, you know. And um, like I played WoW early i played wow uh when it was vanilla like original wow not when it came back out as vanilla like i played original wow i played through the first two expansions it was dope i liked it um but i didn't really get into any any more uh mmo stuff until lost ark and i had a bang up time playing lost ark lost ark was fun you know but MMOs are not an easy thing to get right. Quite often for MMOs, I'm going to like, I'm going to need to see something really, really intriguing for me to want to dive into it early. Or I'll probably, if it looks like something I am maybe interested in, I'm probably going to sit back and see what other people have to say about it before I even consider diving in. Really? Yeah, Mithril? Yeah, I think the thing that's kind of off-putting for me about a lot of MMOs is I need it to be very good to want to invest in it. Because, like, like many live service games, you know, I didn't see a whole lot there that really made me, you know, super excited. Uh, for something that's been in development since 2011, dude? Yikers. I just, I need something that, uh, you know, like for instance, like Lost Ark, you know, Lost Ark is, is a game that I was familiar with well before we even knew it was coming over to the Western hemisphere of the world. Uh, it had been released over in like the Koreas and Russia and China for uh, a couple of years. And uh, I was familiar with it. I knew about it. I hadn't played it, but I knew about it. And it, it was a game that, that, was so notorious over there that it, it, its notoriety had worked its way over to this side of the world, even though people couldn't really play it without a VPN. It didn't even have like many languages in it other than languages where it was being pushed out already. And so it was tough for people to play if you didn't speak uh, or, or you couldn't read other languages and stuff even. But it was just notoriously known as a very well-developed MMO. And once we found out it was coming to the West, I was like, dude, I got to try it, you know? And it it's... It's a very good game. I love it. 
but it it's just that's one of those things like if, I, if i'm gonna dedicate the time to dive into something like that because mmos are always grindy man they take a lot of time and um i want to know that i'm going to be playing something pretty decent you know <sighs> oh really oh nice yeah i've never heard of that one dude Sonic Superstars announced at Summer Games Fest. Um, a new 2D, 3D Sonic is coming to a platform near you. Sonic Superstars is a new classic feeling side-scrolling Sonic title that was revealed during Summer Games Fest on Thursday. Launching in the fall for every major platform, Sonic Superstars features Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and Amy Rose as playable characters. Some of the aforementioned new emerald powers include the ability to multiply swim up waterfalls, and change form. Regarding co-op, it will be true drop-in, drop-out gameplay, allowing players to continue on even if one player disconnects. Here you go. Sega. Eat your heart out, Sonic Frontiers. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I actually think people like Sonic Frontiers all right, yeah? It wasn't like a, a killer game or anything, but I think people dug it okay. This looks good. I thought the same thing whenever I saw it yesterday. Like, oh, this looks pretty dope. Especially for all those like more traditional Sonic enthusiasts, you know? This is gonna this is gonna get some nostalgia vibes going. Here you go if you want to see more about that here you go path of exile 2 let's go here's my concern though i'm gonna i'm gonna let me just be up front i'm gonna be very clear about this grinding gear games is the developer behind path of exile and uh they sold out they sold out what? Two to three years ago? To Tencent. Oh, 2018. 2018. I was a little bit off. A little bit off. 2018. Yeah, yeah. I, that, that was very disappointing to me as well, man. Yeah. Um, so, uh, like I have, I have promoted Path of Exile and Grinding Gear games for years as one of the better examples of a way to do a free to play game. Th this game, I have played this game since there were only two to three acts in it in early access. Um, and I've, I've played it all the way through, like, you know, until the game was well out of like full release and everything and and uh it's a fantastic arpg dungeon crawling experience the amount of end game contents absolutely bonkers it's so much more deep this is the difference this is what you'll quite often hear from people if you want a casual game like that to play you play diablo if you want something deeper that you can actually get real, real, real crazy into with theory crafting and build character builds and stuff like that, you go for Path of Exile. Um, now, I don't know how much... Now, that was always referring to like Diablo 3 versus Path of Exile. Uh, you know, Now, I don't know how much that'll change in regards to 
you know, comparing Path of Exile 2 versus Diablo 4 or anything, but traditionally that's how people, you know, address these two games differently. Um, personally, Diablo 3 was never what I wanted to see from Blizzard uh, in the evolution of the Diablo games from being in love with Diablo 1 and Diablo 2 and D3 was just really subpar for me on release. And so I switched over and found this and, and played I've got 1,200 hours in this. Um, doesn't change with D4. No? Okay. Casual dad players. Yeah. Used to the franchise. I kind of expected that a little bit, but I didn't want to just assume either. You know what I mean? So thanks, Psych. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of, I, you know, I figured that would probably be the case. Uh, and I am going to also... We don't know yet, but I'm going to assume that Path of Exile 2 is going to be much more along the lines of what Path of Exile 1 was, which is a very deep game. It's going to be, in, in, there's a, an incredible amount of information you need to know about the game to actually be able to be semi-versed at being able to get through it and play it, get to end game, stuff like that, you know? Uh, right. Right, right, right. Yeah. And that's where, you know, that's what you're, you're talking about, right? Like the, the people that really want to dive in and get sweaty in it and just min-max stuff and, and theory craft all the time and come up with crazy builds. And, and um, you know, that's where you're going to get more of those kinds of people are going to gravitate more towards something like Path of Exile. And to each of that, it's good that there's two similar games that can appeal to different audiences right that's not a bad thing at all i'm not i'm not demeaning either one of them for being what they are um i did i mean again d4 or d3 did not appeal to me on release so i never went back and played it again i think they turned it into something decent for the people that enjoyed it but um for me it just wasn't there which is why i gravitated towards this what i will say is that this game has always been an, an amazing example of free to play it's always been free on Steam. It's always been free everywhere, but it started out on Steam. I don't know if it got over to consoles or anything. Um, and the only thing they've ever had is like cosmetics. No pay to win. Cosmetics for your character or your base that you can build, your, you know, stuff like that. And maybe a little bit of quality of life stuff like uh, stash, extra stash slots, uh, tabs, and, and things of that nature. But... Um, I think whenever Tencent took over, because I, dude, I haven't been really been playing this game since Tencent took over. Um, I think they started implementing battle pass stuff in it and, and things of that nature. So up front, I'm just a little bit worried about what path of exile two is going to be doing, which would be different than what path of exile one was, which was an amazing very profitable free to play game. You know, they had a focus on great content, quality gameplay, and a free to play experience. Then they still made a ton of money, you know, and it was one of those great examples of being able to do that very well. And now the 10 cents ahead on top of it, I'm, I'm worried about how how much of an aim at, at, at quality there's going to be now as opposed to just money, you know? That's one of my big concerns here. But, uh, I, you know, we'll have to wait and see. I, I love Path of Exile. I hope that Path of Exile 2 is going to be amazing also. But it's going to be, it's going to be a wait and see kind of thing because it's not the same kind of development process that Path of Exile had in the first place, you know? So we'll see what happens. Path of Exile 2 has been in development for years, and for the longest time, absolutely nothing has been shown about the title. Yeah. However, during the Summer Games Fest, a brief snippet was uncovered, revealing a small window of what the in-development title looks like today. It has been 10 years since the original Path of Exile was released. The follow-up game that could be considered an update of the first game is said to be released in 2023. We've had no confirmation of that so far. It's been subject to post postponements over the years following its reveal in 2019. It's finally getting close to being released. Maybe here soon. The dual campaign title that's essentially a sizable DLC to Path of Exile 2013 will introduce a brand new story made up of seven acts that will be separate, offering uh, a separate offering to the first game. 
There's also an all new skill system and some fresh classes just to make Path of Exile 2 feel like its own game. Sadly, no release date was given. Um, let me see if I'll, I'll pull up the... Uh, There you go. Huh? Where are the gods? <clears throat> hey you! What's going on? So, I mean, it's almost like they're doing the same thing in a way that uh, Overwatch did. Whenever Overwatch turned into Overwatch 2, it wasn't really like a completely new game. It was almost like Overwatch 1 got a rehaul or an overhaul. And that's almost like it sounds like what they're doing with Path of Exile a little bit as well. They're adding a lot of new content to it also. But it doesn't sound like it's totally its own new thing either. So I will have to wait and see what, what exactly that means. Find out more on July 28th, all right? <clears throat> There's that if you want more. Street Fighter Six crossing over with Exo Primal. We've been following Exo Primal a little bit. It looks like it could be cool. Uh, I, dude, I've been saying this for a while, though. Uh, of the AAA devs out there, I really feel like Capcom is one of the ones that has continued to be pretty solid. We keep getting really bad games from a lot of other you know, AAA devs. Not all. There's still um, a lot of them out there doing good stuff. But Capcom is one of the really big ones that I feel like is just still doing pretty solid work. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> Exo Primal is looking cool. We saw like a 30-minute a showcase of just Exo Primal. I don't know, roughly a week and a half ago or something. And uh, we've got Capcom Showcase actually popping off later this week. I think, or is it early next week? Early next week, I think. Um, and uh, the biggest thing I'm hyped for out of Capcom is actually Dragon's Dogma 2, which we saw uh, a brief thing on during the PlayStation Showcase at the end of last month. But um, Exo Primal's looking cool. We've been following this for a while. So Street Fighter 6 is set to cross over with Exo Primal later this fall following the game's official release in the summer. News was revealed during today's Summer Games Fest with an official trailer. First look at the crossover series, uh, C-Series mascot Ryu supporting a very different look as he's confronted by a sinister artificial intelligence before being transported to Bikitoa Island. Here's the trailer of that. I am the Advanced Artificial Intelligence Leviathan. Welcome to Pikitoa Island. Wonder how much that's gonna cost. Maybe, I, this is the thing that's kind of uh, scared me about Exo Prime already. Is it is very, 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 very much built for cosmetic shop and like battle pass stuff and everything like that. So. It's going to be free to play on like subscription service on release. So like Game Pass, you know, but uh, you can also buy it outright, obviously. And it, dude, it's all about cosmetics, dude. You can see it already. See all this? Battle Pass, cosmetic shop, <clears throat> flexing to look different. You know what I mean? Like so many games nowadays, but Let's see what happens. This game looks dope, dude. Remnant 2 gameplay trailer revealed at Summer Games. I keep getting hyped up about Remnant 2. Uh, Remnant 2, excuse me. Uh, a new Remnant 2 gameplay trailer has been revealed during the Summer Games Fest livestream. Developed by Gunfire Games and published by Gearbox Publishing, the game has been confirmed to release July 25th 
of 2024. So we've got about a year left, a little over a year, and we'll release on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series, XS, and PC. They are already marketing the crap out of this game. This is a big deal for them, apparently. But that gives us time to maybe play uh, of some no Remnant the room 1. I would love to co-op some Remnant 1. I've already got it on Epic. So if there are other people... I mean, they've given it away a couple times on Epic. So if there are other people in the community that would be interested in playing uh, the first in this series before the second one comes out, let's let's talk about that. No turning back after this. You sure? It's supposed to be a very difficult game, by the way. I think this looks sick, dude. I think it looks great. I wonder if the first one's crossplay. We need to look that up. I feel like we looked that up once before and I can't remember. Yes, Remnant from the Ashes is cross-play and cross-platform. Remnant from the Ashes is available on Windows, PS4, and Xbox One. With plans to publish its uh, Switch port in March of this year, so it might have gotten to Switch too. Remnant from the Ashes, which is the first in this series, right? Um, allows you to team up with uh, two more people. So you can... Uh, three, uh, three players at a time, I guess. Only supports cross-play across the following platforms. PC, Xbox One, and Xbox Series X and S. For PlayStation, it can only cross-play between PS4 and PS5. Steam players can cross-play with Epic players. Both Steam players and Epic players are unable to play with Xbox One and Xbox Series XS players. It is also supporting cross progression and cross save. Interesting. That's pretty cool. Nice. All right. Sick. Sick. I'm interested in playing that. I'm interested in playing the first one. That way we can maybe play the second one whenever it comes out, do some co-op stuff. Uh, details on Nicolas Cage in Dead by Daylight. Dude, it was so cool seeing Nick Cage uh, as part of the show yesterday. That was cool. Uh, he's going to be a survivor. Yep. Which is a heightened, exaggerated version of the actor known as Nick Cage. Yeet. <laughs> yeah it was cool to see him did you guys get to see him on there yesterday he looked pretty good dude i mean there's no way he's not dying that hair you know what i mean but uh he looked pretty good dude 
It looked pretty good. So Nick Cage is in uh, coming to Dead by Daylight, dude. That's cool. That's cool. What a legend. Here you go, Prince of Persia fans. Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, releases January of uh, next year, okay? So Ubisoft has revealed Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown at Summer Games Fest. The new game will release on Switch, Xbox Series X, S, PS1, or excuse me, Xbox One, PS5, PS4, and Amazon Luna. P get your PS1s out, guys. All right? Here's the... <laughs> the game looked pretty good, dude. It looked pretty good. Not your uh, traditional Prince of Persia game, you know, but the prince has been it still looks pretty solid, I think. To a forbidden land. All hope rests with us, the immortals, to rescue him and save the empire. But we weren't prepared for what was coming next. Then again, they weren't prepared for me. It's got more of that like um, modern take on like the old school like God of War games, you know what I mean? That's kind of the vibe that it gives me. In these times of darkness, hope is the only thing that keeps us fighting. I will fulfill my destiny and save the kingdom. The Lost Crown. So in January, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Scribe is taking inspiration from Ori and will be a 2.5D game. Also said the game was being developed by uh, Ubisoft Montpier. If you need more, I'll link it. Bandai Namco announced Sandland game based on the beloved manga. Yeah, dude, when I first saw this yesterday, I thought it was going to be... Um, was it Dragon Quest Monsters or whatever? Um, but this looks kind of cool. A new RPG based on Dragon Ball creator uh, Akira Toriyama Sandland was announced at today's Summer Game Fest. The game is being developed by uh, ILCA Incorporated and follows the story of super evil fiend Bezelbub, Bezelbub as he seeks to stop the water shortage plaguing his homeland. Bandai Namco consistently publishes great games based on anime and has a track record Placing the right developers with the right series. So this is one to definitely keep an eye on. It looks kind of wild. It looks pretty neat. Beezlebub. When are we getting the new Beetlejuice movie? I want to see that. Grandpa? I need more coffee. It looks cool, dude. Goku, yeah. Stanley.
If you need more, here you go. All right, Persona 3 Reload and Persona 5 Tactica leaked launching on Xbox Game Pass. Two Persona games, the remake of Persona 3 and Persona 5 Strategy Game, have leaked ahead of the Xbox Game Showcase. Two new Persona games, Persona 3 Reload and Persona 5 Tactica, have leaked online thanks to Atlas posting trailers for both games early. Uh, Persona 3 Reload launches in early 2024 on Xbox One and Series X and S and Windows, while uh, Persona 5 Tactica releases November 17th on same platforms. Both trailers indicate the games will be available via Xbox Game Pass at launch. Uh, Persona 3 Reload, which is a remake of Persona 3. Um, there have been various versions of Persona 3. Not known yet whether uh, how many of the various versions different mechanics will be incorporated in this one. This version of Persona 3 looks much closer to Persona 5 and its menus and social scenes. Combat looks much closer to the original version of Persona 3 with the party members surrounding the enemy shadows in a 3D space. Uh, second trailer is for Persona 5 Tactica, another spinoff of the widely popular Persona 5. This spinoff features a much more cartoonish look with characters looking like chibi versions of themselves. The game is, uh, is a strategy RPG with gameplay similar to Fire Emblem. Stra the trailer also features a new purple-haired girl fighting alongside the original cast of Persona 5. Uh, both trailers are likely set to premiere or, uh, officially during the Xbox Game Showcase, so we'll see them, but I'll link this if you want to look them up on Sunday, June 11th. I don't want to like spoil the showcase for myself, but if you guys want to look at it, I'll put it in the chat for you, okay? Based on the Xbox branding that appears in both trailers, while these games might not be exclusive to Xbox consoles and PC, no other platforms appear in the trailers. There you go. All right, last article I have for the morning. Then we'll talk about the uh, schedule real quick before we uh, take a quick break and then start the Gorilla Collective VOD while we wait on the um, – because we missed that on Wednesday uh, – while we wait on the accessibility showcase to pop off at 11, okay? Uh, all right, dude. Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty leaks online at $35. I'm guessing that's U.S. I'm not gonna have a popular take on this. I don't really care. Um, I'll read this and then we'll talk about it. Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty DLC is leaked online ahead of today's speculated Summer Games Fest announcement. According to GOG, the Phantom Liberty DLC will cost 30 euros, which is equivalent to 30 pounds or around $35 US. Despite the listing only being up for a short while, pictures of the DLC have already begun circulating via Reddit um, unfortunately though, the leaked listing did not contain any details on what the expansion entails or when it will release. CD Projekt Red will be at today's Summer Game Fest though. It's widely believed the DLC will make an appearance. Previous rumors have suggested the uh, Phantom Liberty DLC could be released as soon as August. In terms of what platforms the upcoming Cyberpunk expansion will release on, CD Projekt Red is only planning for PC, P PS5, and Xbox Series X uh, versions. Yeah, I've got uh, a video out there on our YouTube channel. Uh, talking about how I, I think that's kind of gross. Um, and this is why. I'll just TLDR this. When they announced this DLC, along with the announcement of the DLC, the um, main producers and directors behind uh, this project for CD Projekt Red were stating that now people will be able to experience cyberpunk the way it was always meant to be experienced so along with that quote from them those statements from them they announced that they were only going to be releasing this dlc for pc ps5 and xbox series x versions of the game where so many people bought this game on ps4 and xbox one right and so, uh, yes, don't get me wrong. CD Projekt Red is willing to, uh, they're they will give anybody an upgrade, a free upgrade of the game from a previous gen console to a new gen console version, but not everybody has the money 
to just buy a new gen console, man. Yeah? And you released this game on all those consoles. You released this game on all those platforms. And then you're going to release a statement like that stating that now the game is going to be what it was always supposed to be experienced like, but only the people that have new gen consoles and PC will be able to experience it. That's disgusting to me. I think that's gross. And um, it's one of the biggest things of recent, aside from the absolutely nightmarish release of this game that has really made me get to where I will never, not never, I will not buy a CD Projekt Red game um, on release or pre-order for the foreseeable future. There's no flipping way. Um, so I'll continue. I'll move on here and uh, I'll, I'll express my... I've got some more sentiments to talk about the price of this DLC too. Earlier this week, new details on the Cyberpunk uh, sequel codenamed uh, Orion were released. Per the report, it will be developed in the US with a team of 350 to 500 developers, while the Polish team will assist in some areas. The team of developers currently working on Phantom Liberty will move over to the next game after their work is completed. That said, some of the, those developers will move on to work on the Witcher franchise instead. Um, so uh, this is what I'm going to say. This is what I'm going to say. Um, so again, I want to go back to this paragraph. And according to GOG, the Phantom Liberty DLC will cost 30 euros, uh, equivalent to 30 pounds, or uh, around $35 US. <clears throat> this is not going to be a popular take, and I don't really give a crap, dude. This is one of the best examples of a terrible release in modern gaming history. One of the best examples of a company releasing a product that was so absolutely far from finished that they had to start pulling it back off the shelves. There were so many people that got cheated out of their money by this, this company and this game. And um, what's the, the grossest part about it is how heavily they promoted it and marketed this game. They made so many people buy into the hype. They made so many people buy into the hype and then released this game knowing it was not even remotely close to ready to be played. They knew what they were doing. And that is why I am so, so, so opposed to supporting CDPR right now. Um, Again, I know there are going to be a lot of people that have different takes on this that won't agree with me. That's okay. You don't have to agree with me. We can agree to disagree. That's fine. But there are going to be a lot of people that go, well, they stood by it and they turned it into something decent. Cool. I'm glad they did. For all those people that uh, ended up spending money on the game, they should have done that. But the fact of the matter is they should have never released this game when they did. It should have never been released in the state that it was. But they did that, knowing full well the game was not ready. Knowing full well they were going to just reap the benefits as much as possible and make the consumer pay the price, right? Make us gaming enthusiasts pay the price. Which is not acceptable in my book. Then they want to come out with the DLC now for half the price of the main game. Well, in my opinion, what they should be doing right here is giving this content to the community for supporting the game in the first place, even though it was a hot piece of trash to begin with. So it's not like they, they've made good money off this game. This game has sold well. They stuck by it. They turned it into something decent. But in my opinion, it's unacceptable what they did. Um, you're right. 
You're right, Mithril. Hello Games, which also was not acceptable the way they released that game, but every single piece of content that has ever come out for No Man's Sky has always been a part of the base game. They've never charged anything extra for any content that's ever come out for that game, and there's been a ton of content. So um, I find it disgusting that uh, not only did they say that you know, this is the way, now the game will be able to be played the way it was always meant to be experienced and played. Um, but they're not going to let previous gen players play the game, play the DLC. That's just the cherry on top. But ultimately, in my opinion, the absolutely disgusting nature of the way this game was released, hyped up and promoted, and then duped every all these people into buying this game. You know, the the least they could have done was giving everybody this DLC. Again, I know this is not going to be a popular take. That's fine. You don't have to agree with me. Um, but I'll stand by it. I think it's uh, we're plagued in the industry right now with uh, these AAA devs that want to keep doing this crap to us. And it won't stop, man. It's not going to stop happening until we quit buying into it. And... Um, I think it's just gross that they couldn't turn around and and at least give the community something decent in return for for sticking with the game and sticking with the company uh, after such a nightmare release, which they they should have never done. It's gross. Hold on. <laughs> Baited you guys. You thought I was done. Yo, um, so I'm going to take a quick break, but this is what we're going to do. Uh, at 11 o'clock, the uh, Accessibility Summer Showcase pops off. And so we're going to watch that live. But we missed the Gorilla Collective on Wednesday because I wasn't live, okay? Um, the stream was down on Wednesday, so we missed Gorilla Collective. This is like a three-hour showcase, I think, though. So what we're going to do is we're going to watch like the first half of it then get accessibility showcase, summer showcase in, and then we'll either watch the last half of it afterwards or we'll watch the other half of it tomorrow morning in between the news and uh, Wholesome Direct, whatever you guys want to do, okay? But we'll just take some time, watch uh, uh, at least a good chunk of the Gorilla Collective we missed. We'll watch that VOD until the accessibility showcase pops off. We'll watch that up until lunchtime, and then we'll play games for the rest of the afternoon. Cool? That's the jam. Tomorrow. Wholesome Direct and Future Game Show, uh, those will start at 11 a.m. So we'll probably do the news, maybe watch the rest of the Gorilla Collective Showcase VOD, and then watch those showcases before we get into gaming tomorrow too, okay? That's what it is. That's what it do. That's what we do. That's what that's what we do. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I'm such a dork. Uh you guys rock, man. I appreciate you. Yo, big shout out, dude. Uh, 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 dude, the, um, <clears throat> let me say this first and foremost. Dude, we had a bunch of, of, uh, gifties I didn't call out. Yes. Psych with a gifty yesterday to Mithril. Happy with the gifty to Blue. Dude, um, and True. And, um, then Wick with the resub, the 18 month, the double Twitch, baby. You know what I'm saying? And then Miss Bat with the resub today, too, man. Uh, you guys are incredible. I appreciate all the support very, very much. And um, we're not done, but we're done with the news. So um, if anybody's checking out this content and you're enjoying any of this, we have all kinds of um, clips from, from uh, video gaming news segments, entire video gaming news segments. We have playthroughs of games we've played that are cut into episodes, different episodes. Um, and uh, highlights and clips, funny clips, funny things that have happened just here in the community and the games that we've played, stuff like that. All of that stuff is on the Twitch channel, the YouTube channel. Um, and if you're enjoying any of it, I would prompt you. <laughs> God, I would prompt you guys to uh, come hang out and uh, be a part of what we do here, man. We got an amazing community of people that uh, you know we we promote a. Uh, fun, safe, inclusive community here. Uh, we just want people to come hang out, 
and and have a good time and, and be a part of what we all enjoy which is uh video games man so um other than that stay healthy stay safe be kind and uh, we'll catch everybody tomorrow morning for june 10th edition of video gaming news all right